Well, hello there. How are you doing today? Hopefully you're well. Tim Warner here, and today I'm going to teach you how to use chat modes in GitHub Copilot. Here I am in Visual Studio Code, and I've brought out GitHub Copilot. Of course, this is going to assume that you're already licensed for GitHub Copilot. You've installed the GitHub Copilot chat extension in VS Code. You've authenticated with your GitHub account, and you're ready to rock and roll. The idea is this. How many times have you gone into agent mode because you're really a fan of MCPs? If we come over to extensions, we can see under my MCP servers, I've got just a few, but the more of these you install, the more you're going to weigh down your context and reduce the performance of your coding. For example, if we look down here, see that my tools menu is showing in a degraded state because I have too many tools involved. Now I can turn them off and selectively turn on what I need and that's going to reduce the, the impact here and the latency. But ain't nobody got time for that. Let me show you how modes work. If we open down here, we can go between the three existing modes, Ask, which involves not touching your code, but just chatting with GitHub Copilot, and then Edit and Agent, which both allow GitHub Copilot to do single or multi-file editing. Well, guess what? We can go to configure modes and we can build out custom modes that have different MCP and tool capabilities. So notice here that it drops down and says create a new custom mode file and then any that you have, we can come down here and copy or move. We can rename it, we can delete it, or if we click it, it allows us to edit it. And I created one called default mode. I'm going to create yet another one for you right now, actually a couple. I'm going to click create a new one. Now this is important. If you want your mode to live in the repo, you can choose .github chat modes, and I'm going to do that now. If you want the mode to be available to your user profile, including in setting sync, so it'll be available wherever you have VS Code, then you're going to choose user data. And notice that when I hover over it, it goes under my user app data roaming code user prompts section. I'm going to put this one in the repo though, that'll be under the .github folder, and I'm going to call this MS Learn Dev. Why? You'll see in just a second. I'll press enter to confirm, and now you see under .github, I have chat modes, and I've got mslearn-dev.chatmode.md. This is a markdown file that has a YAML prefix. We start with a description. I'm going to call this toolset for MS course development, because in my line of work, I'm doing course development dollars to donuts. Specifically, chat modes include a description, obviously, a tool set, and also custom instructions. The real benefit here is we can click configure tools and then choose what we want to bring in. I'm going to include the built-in tools because that's kind of a no-brainer. And I'm also, for my development, let's see, the specific MCP servers that show up on this list depend on those that you've loaded in via extensions or directly. There's also a setting that you can put in settings JSON that allows auto discovery of MCP configs that point to servers that you might have in cloud desktop or cursor AI or so on. I'm going to bring in my MS Learn docs. I definitely want that. I do a lot of conversion from office format into markdown for LLM ingestion. So I'm going to bring in my market down server as well. And notice now I've got built in, I've got Mark it Down, and I've got MS Docs. That's only 39 tools. That's light. That's what I'm talking about here. And when we click out of there, now we've got that tool set. And then the magic here, if you want to call it that, is that we can now create custom instructions that will guide GitHub Copilot when we invoke this mode. Help Tim create excellent Microsoft tech training. Always use the MS Learn MCP server to get latest current info. So you can just go on from here and we can use markdown syntax to use unordered lists, ordered lists. We can use headings to convey semantics, but that's the idea. So we've successfully saved that. Now I'm going to create another one. Now notice up here in the chat, we can hit the configure chat and we can come down to modes. That's another way to see it if you don't want to use the control down here. Speaking of which, notice to use the new mode, I can come up and choose MS Learn Dev from the list and I'm just going to ask it a quick question. What is the current name of what used to be 
called the Form Recognizer Azure service. Hopefully it's going to make an MCP call, but if the LLM can fetch that information reliably with internet access, it'll probably go that way as well. Yeah, it did. But the idea is in our chat mode, we want to use the MCP server wherever possible. Now, as I said, let me come up and create one more mode. I'm going to click the gear this time and we'll come down to modes. I'm going to create a new custom chat mode file. And in this one, I'm going to choose create a new custom chat mode file. The location I'm going to put in my user data. I'm going to call it GitHub mode. Give it a description. I'll go to tools. And in this case, I'm going to do built in and I'm going to bring in my GitHub tools, which there's quite a few. Notice that that puts us over the VS code threshold of 128. Now notice that we don't have to include all of the built-ins. We don't have to use all of the GitHub tools. In fact, let me come in here and find some that I probably won't use. Like let's say I don't want to delete a file necessarily. I don't want to download workflow artifacts. And that brings us just under that threshold. Okay. That's a lot of tools. The official GitHub MCP external server is pretty heavy. It's got a lot of tools incorporated in it. And I'm sure we'll see that change over time in the future. All right. Now, last thing, how do we clean this up? Because you might find over time that you've got some chat modes that you're pulling from the repo, others that you're pulling from user settings. What we can do again is bring up modes and then we can remove any that we don't want. As I said, you can find it in the list, give it a click, and that'll actually open up the source file. This is one that's in my user settings. And again, this will travel with setting sync as long as you've got that set up in setting sync that you're syncing the prompt information as well. Let me go back to modes one more time and I'll go over to delete. Are you sure you want to delete this mode? Yes. And it's gone. And I'll hit escape and we're back in business. So I hope that you found this lesson helpful. These modes can be really helpful in terms of wrangling your different MCP servers. And also the added benefit of adding those custom instructions can be helpful as well. Let me finish with a flourish by opening configure chat one more time because you might be thinking, Tim, that was pretty sweet. Now what's the situation with prompt files and instructions and tool sets? and MCP servers, please like and subscribe. You know the typical song and dance with YouTube because I'm happy to continue to post these brief tutorials and get you smart on these different technologies. I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot for visiting.